Hey everyone, welcome to this video. As you may notice, I'm in a beautiful studio. I wish I could use this every day, but uh, I'm temporarily allowed to use the Google Creator Studio here at uh, Google I.O. Connect in Berlin. And in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through um, all the new features that I've seen happening lately on the web. You might have heard of some, some of them are completely new to you. A lot of them are interesting and I'm gonna do follow-up videos later on uh, about specific features. So we're gonna deep dive into some of them. But since I'm gonna cover maybe 10 features, uh, I want you to let me know at the end of the video which features you want me to do to make a deep dive on. First of all, before we start with the features, um, if you don't know, there's something called Baseline. It was shipped by Google and it's a way to categorize the features on the web in three categories. Baseline widely available, Baseline newly available, and baseline limited av availability. Widely available means a feature has been uh, available for over 30 months, which, which is two and a half years, which means generally you can use that confidently and all of your users or approximately 95% of your users will have it because it's been supported on three browsers for at least two and a half years. The other one, newly available, means it recently became available on uh, the four core browsers, so Chrome and Edge, Firefox and Safari. And limited availability, it means it's supported on some of these browsers, but not all of them. And that doesn't necessarily mean you cannot use it, because sometimes you can have a polyfill, sometimes you can gate it behind a progressive enhancement. And yeah, it also depends on your users. So for every feature, you're gonna see the baseline in the bottom right corner or bottom left corner. But uh, keep in mind, you might watch this video in the future and things are moving pretty fast. So it might already go from limited availability to newly available. So make sure to check that out. First feature I want to cover is a uh, developer experience feature is called light dark. Light dark is a CSS function that you can use to easily build light and dark themes in CSS. Instead of having uh, a big chunk of code for light theme and another big one for dark theme, you can now have all of it in just one CSS selector, for example, in the root, and you provide the light color and the dark color. So light dark, except the light color and the dark color, and it's gonna select one of these two colors and it will automatically give it to you depending on the color scheme. So make sure you are using the color scheme property and based on the value of the color scheme, it's gonna choose either the light color or the dark color. The next feature I wanna talk about is called CSS container queries. And this is an interesting one because uh, you're gonna see the next one builds on top of it. So to learn about that, I'm gonna show you a quick demo and I'm gonna use my uh, course here, learnhmlcss.online, because I have a challenge on it. And take a look, we have a card here. We have the card container and then we have the card inside of it. And we have a bit of CSS. I'm gonna show you the CSS in a minute, but take a look. I'm gonna change the size of the card container and when I reach 25 REM, it's gonna automatically change the flex direction. And this is pretty cool because now all of the styles are contained in one CSS file. So this is really cool for design systems and UI kits. For that to work, I have to specify a container. This is a shorthand of container name and container type. So I'm gonna rewrite it to container name card and container type inline size. So the container name, you can, it can be whatever you want. And then uh, the container type is inline size, which means um, we're gonna be tracking or we're interested in the horizontal size of this container. Okay, now for any item of this container, we can um, write a container query, but it's important to note that it's only available for the children. So we cannot do it for the card container, but we can do it for the children. So now I can go down to the card and then I can use CSS nesting and define a container and when I, I can say when the max width is 25 REM, then I'm gonna change the flex direction to colon. And then take a look. Yeah, uh, this is really cool, very easy to write. If you don't wanna use uh, nesting, then I can cut this, put it out, but then I have to define, I have to specify the name of the container and that's gonna be card. And you will see now it so works. It actually doesn't. Oh yeah, I forgot to define the card selector here. And yeah, now it works. Now, the next feature I wanna cover is a scroll state. And this is a very cool feature because we can finally know if a scroll snap has snapped 
or if a sticky has actually is actually now stuck to the top or to the bottom. And you can also know if a div is scrollable or not scrollable anymore. And this builds on top of container queries. You basically have to define uh, a container again, and the container type must be scroll state. And then similarly, you can write a container query where you check the scroll state. So add container followed by the container name, scroll state, and then stuck colon top, so stuck to the top. And now you can customize that. So you can customize an element when it gets stuck to the top, which is really pretty cool. Of course, this is limited availability at the moment, uh, so it will not work on all browsers. But keep an eye on it. Browsers have been so fast at working on these things. It's very cool. Then I want to talk about Dialog. Dialog is such a powerful HTML element that I've been using for a while in production. It's pretty cool because if you open it in modal mode, it's going to open in the top layer, which means it's going to open on top of all of your web page, on top of the biggest Z index. Even if you have a Z index of 214748 check this video if you've never heard of that number before. Yeah, here's an example again. I'll run the code. Yeah, I have an open dialog. Click on it. And you will see this is opening on top of all the content. And we can even inspect that. And you will see it is opening in the top layer. And the top layer is on top of all the page. But I'm in an iframe here, so it's on top of all the content of the iframe. But something else that's pretty cool is that we can customize the backdrop. The backdrop is what you see over here. So for example, I can say background color, red, and it's a double colon, and then opacity 0 0.5. Of course, you can do the blur and everything. But yeah, you can easily customize the backdrop. While the dialog works on all browsers already, uh, this feature is relatively new. But I can say closed by equals any. And this will automatically create a light dismiss behavior. So if I click anywhere on the backdrop, it's going to close it automatically. So for this, you need a polyfill, or you need to wait for browser support, or just implement it yourself. Next up, we have a very niche API, uh, but I think it's an amazing API. It's very powerful. You can use it if you're building a web in kind of like software, if you're using for example, web to build a checkout experience uh, in an actual store where you have an additional screen and you want to show content to the user different than what you show yourself. For example, you want to show uh, the total amount they're going to pay, but you have the admin where you add and remove all the content. So this is possible by the document PIP, document picture and picture API. And even though this doesn't work on all browsers, um, you can treat it as progressive enhancement. You, there's, of course, no polyfill for it, so you have to uh, think about how you're going to handle that. And I've written an article about it on developer.chrome.com. It's linked in the description below. You can check it out. Uh, you can also see how I've used it with progressive enhancement. I will uh, just go ahead and show you the demo. So here's the demo. Um, it's, again, the same app. And if I max maximize that, enter picture in picture mode, you have this whole preview, this whole browser preview of the code is now in picture in picture mode, which is really cool because, say I have another screen here, I don't currently have a second screen, but I can just take it and move it and place it on the second screen. So I can write the code, I can read the instructions, and I have something else that is always placed on top of everything on the second screen. That's really mind-blowing that we can do this on the web. Now, on browsers that don't support this feature, um, the fallback that I have is that it just maximizes in current place. And I know this is not ideal, but you're still offering some kind of experience for the browsers that don't support it yet. So what do you think about all of these? Which features do you want me to make a deep dive on? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.